Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here and welcome to another video. In today's video, as the title suggests, we're going to be getting you up to date for Shadow Priest 8.3 Arena. After playing a considerable amount and figuring out the best gear setup, I figured it's time to share my findings. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a European Shadow Priest focusing on Arena, RBG and PvE, obtaining numerous rank 1s and holding the record for the highest rating ever achieved by a Shadow in all three brackets. In this guide, we're going to be including an update on talents, essences, azurite choices, trinkets, and the new corruption mechanic. Finishing it off by covering your rotation and playstyle inside of Arena. Let's get straight into it then. Starting off, as always, with the talent section. What we do is start off with a good baseline, and then cover any adaptations that you'll want to make to this depending on matchup and compositions. A good talent baseline for Shadow is going to look like this. We've got Shadowy Insight, Intangibility, Misery, Psychic Horror, Shadow Word Death, Mindbender, and Legacy of the Void. Now, there are of course times where you'll want to swap some talents around, depending on scenario, and we we'll cover that now. The first option you can consider is on the level 60 row. This is our crowd control row, and when you play what, depends on what composition you're playing. For example, if you're playing with a class bringing consistent stuns, you won't need Psychic Horror and Mind Bomb or Last Word can be a much better option. When you play what depends on a few factors. For instance, if you need to secure Psychic Screams and it's going to be impossible due to whatever reason, then Mind Bomb is going to be a great option. If you're looking to kill healers or you can easily land your Psychic Scream, then pick up Last Word. The only other option you'll want to consider changing is on the level 90 row. Mindbender is better for pure single target damage, or if you don't think you're going to be able to reach high stacks of void form and consistently cycle them. If you're left free and need some added damage, then Lingering Insanity is going to provide that. As for the rest of your talents, they are pretty much set in stone. You might be thinking, why no Auspicious Spirits anymore? Well, with them being nerfed in patch 8.3 and this build no longer prioritizing critical strike, having the finishing power of Shadow Word Death is just better in all scenarios now. Moving on to PvP talents, now let's again start off with a good baseline, then cover why and what other options there are. Now, a good baseline is this. Void Origins, Greater Fade, and Mind Trauma. Void Origins, if you've played Shadow, you'd know is a must, making entering Void form a non-issue. Without this talent, you're going to have to be constantly cast in Void Eruption, which is very telegraphed and a very long cast time. Trust me, just never swap this talent out. Greater Fade is another must-have, good in all scenarios. Great when being trained due to the immunity as you can use Fade as an extra defensive on top of your Dispersion and Void Shift. Whilst it's also still great if you're not the target, as you can either use it as a way to avoid crowd control or even for the added movement speed to secure crowd control of your own. My third talent recommendation is Mind Trauma. This talent is actually insane when you can make use out of it, being able to steal up to a potential of 24% haste for yourself, which is huge. This also reduces the opponent's haste capping at 12% for each target, although there is no limit on targets. Now, in those situations where Mind Trauma isn't going to be gaining much use, a good example is when you're getting heavily trained and locked down so you can't really stack it up, or heavy CC compositions where you again won't get to build any stacks. For those situations, honestly, there isn't any other real good options, and Mind Trauma, even if you can't gain many stacks, will still provide a good benefit. The only other talents worth considering are either Siphoned or Driven to Madness. Siphoned can be decent if you're doing setups or the enemy likes to retreat. A wild well time Siphon can really add to your pressure. Whilst Driven to Madness provides a little more insanity if you're getting trained, but it's not that great. Void Shift should also always be played. So in those rare cases where you don't run with Conflict and Strife Major, 
which of course provides this, make sure you talent it instead. Up next, we've got Essences. With 8.3, we saw the release of some new ones along with another minor slot, allowing us to now wear three Essences with neck level 75. Starting with Major Essences, you have two main options. Most commonly though, you'll want Conflict and Strife. Conflict and Strife not only provides you with a must-have talent in Void Shift, but also a huge bonus to your versatility, allowing you to be much more durable. It's very rare that you'll ever play without this. Now, the only other option you should ever consider is the recently added Breath of the Dying. When you play this, it's extremely situational, but it can be some nice added damage in more setup-oriented compositions, where you're not going to be trained. Bear in mind though, you'll have to select Void Shift as a PvP talent. In patch 8.3 as we mentioned, we gained access to three minor essences now. And for these, your first minor should always be the alternative to whichever major you are not running. So if you have Conflict as your major, you want Breath as your minor and vice versa. And the next minor you'll want is Memory of Lucid Dreams. This can help you extend your void forms, does a little bit of healing, but more importantly provides with a nice chunk of versatility, making you all that more durable. Then for your last slot, you have two options. The essence of the focus in Iris is going to be the best when you're playing a setup composition where you're rarely swapping targets, as it provides you with a huge boost of haste, whereas Blood of the Enemy is a good option for compositions like Shadow Play where you're looking to maximize your overall damage. Moving on, our next section is going to be on gearing. We're going to be covering stat priority, Azerite traits, corruption, and trinkets, along with any other must-have pieces of gear. Kicking things off with stat priority, a few things have changed for Shadow. Previously, our best stats were haste and crit. However, due to the nerfs to auspicious spirits, crit is no longer the best option after haste. So, your stat priority is going to look like this. Haste, versatility, critical strike, then mastery. Now, we've also seen some changes to Azerite traits for Shadow. It's pretty simple now though, there is one trait you want to aim for above all else, and that's Death Throws. Death Throws provides a large boost to your Shadow Ed Pain, which in PvP is more often than not your highest damage source. Making sure to have three of these is going to be your number one priority. To pair with Death Throws, the best option used to be Spiteful Apparitions. But now that we're no longer prioritizing Critical Strike, this trait no longer grants any benefit. This means the best trait is going to be Heart of Darkness. This trait is actually insane, and just what Shadow needed, as there was literally zero other options for a secondary major trait. Heart of Darkness is also not nerfed by 50% in PvP, like all other Azerite traits are, meaning this trait is going to provide you with a huge bonus to your secondary stats, as long as you keep above that 25 corruption threshold. Okay, so what pieces do you want to aim to farm to obtain this trait setup? Well, all three pieces come from the new raid, Nyalotha the Waking City. The helm to aim for is the Visage of Nightmarish Machination, having Death Throws, Heart of Darkness, and Twist Magic. Then for shoulders, you should look to get the Void Ascendance Mantle, dropping from one of the earlier bosses, Vexiona. Finally, for chest piece, you're looking to need to kill Raden, one of the later bosses, as he drops the robe of the Fallen Keeper. This Azerite setup provides free Death Rose and free Heart of Darkness. Trinkets are now an integral part of gearing, with select trinkets being incredibly important to have. For Shadow, the trinkets you want to look to obtain are the Forbidden Obsidian Claw and the Vita Charged Titan Shard. The Forbidden Obsidian Claw is a must for almost all casters and healers alike. This trinket not only provides mana, which for Shadow is basically useless, but the damage it deals is just absurd, dealing up to 250k damage with a single use. On the other hand, the Vita Charged Titan Shard provides a huge amount of haste, both passive and proc. With haste being our favoured stat, this trinket gains a ton of value. Alternatively, some good defensive options are either an emblem or safeguard for those times where you just need that added survivability. Up next, we've got everybody's favourite new addition to the game, Corruption. Insane RNG, balanced damage and just all around fun. There is one corruption that reigns supreme above all lovers when it comes to damage, and that's Gushing Wound. This is just insane. For 15 corruption, it has the potential to do almost as much as 75 corruption worth of infinite stars. Gushing Wound is hands down the best by far for all classes, 
and Shadow Priest is no exception. But of course, corruption isn't a luxury we can all pick and choose. So some other options are percent increases to your favoured stats. So haste and versatility, which are versatile and expedient. With the proc alternatives race in pulse or surge in vitality being just a little weaker, but still okay options. Both Twisted Appendage and Infinite Stars got heavily nerfed for PvP, meaning they're not that great. But if it's all you got, then by all means, it's going to be better than nothing. Alright then, now we've covered everything in terms of gearing and setting up your character ready for arena, let's now cover rotation. Shadow Priest primarily revolves around their dots, Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain. Your rotation is dependent on if you're inside Void Form or not. Outside of Void Form, it looks like this. You'll first want to get up Shadow Word Pain on all targets that you're focusing, then work on getting Vampiric Touch up, using Mind Blast to generate insanity. If you have your dots up and Mind Blast is off cooldown, you should either use Dispel Magic or Mind Flay as your filler. If you have Mind Trauma, Mind Flay becomes far more important and you should make sure you maintain your stacks. Inside of Void Form, your rotation remains the same, however you gain access to Void Bolt. This now becomes your number one priority due to its insanity generation, damage and dot extension. So we've covered rotation and have all the necessary information on how to gear up your character. But what about playstyle inside of Arena? Shadow Priest brings a lot of instant crowd control with Psychic Scream, Psychic Horror, Silence and even Mind Bomb. This means learning to maximise this is going to be key to your success inside of Arena, but just throwing your CC off cooldown doesn't cut it. Arena at its simplest form is damage combined with crowd control will score a kill. Without damage, your crowd control is useless. Without crowd control, your damage can often be outhealed. So looking to combine the two is key to victory. This means looking to save your crowd control until you already have pressure or your teammate has big damage is the best time to use it. Furthermore, you should ideally look to chain all your crowd control at the same time. A longer CC chain is going to create more pressure than spreading your crowd control out. Priest not only has an abundance of crowd control, but they also bring a lot of defensives. Learning how to correctly use these can greatly improve your survivability. Dispersion is your bread and butter defensive. The power of this cooldown lies in the fact that it can be used in fears, silences and stuns. This means the best time to use Dispersion is going to be in one of these scenarios. Remember, Dispersion also heals you for 50% of your maximum health. So, dispersing at 100% health to reduce damage is just going to be a waste. Greater Fade can be used two ways. First is to avoid large amounts of incoming damage. So, if you see a Greater Pyroblast or a Chaos Bot about to hit you, you can preemptively use this defensive. Remember, Greater Fade makes you immune to everything bar knockbacks and interrupts. The other way Greater Fade can be used is if you're not the target. You can look to use Greater Fade as a tool to immune crowd control effects or even as a tool to gain mobility. Void Shift is your last line of defense. The reason for this is that Void Shift can be used to save your allies as well, and with it being such a long cooldown, we'll often only see one use per game. Look to either use Fade or Dispersion first. Shadow Priest also brings a ton of utility with their kit. We have access to Power Word Shield, Vampiric Embrace, Mass Dispel and Leap of Faith. Knowing how to make the most out of these talents is how you can push your gameplay to that next level. First, let's talk about Power Word Shield. This is probably the easiest utility spell to use. Most priests only ever use this on themselves, but this is a great tool to add that extra little bit of survivability to your teammates when they're being trained. Try to get into the habit of always using Power Word Shield on yourself or whoever the enemy is focusing every time you get locked out. Vampiric Embrace is something that can really be hit or miss, but you shouldn't ever neglect it. The best way to look at Vampiric Embrace is if you have damage, then this is going to do decent healing. How I tend to use Vampiric Embrace is to combine it with my Void Eruption, especially if it's going to hit multiple targets. This can provide a huge chunk of instant burst healing and then some decent sustained healing to either yourself or your teammates. Leap of Faith is one of Priest's most powerful spells if you can use it correctly. Now, there there are so many uses for Leap of Faith. You can do things like grip kidney shots on your teammates in anticipation of smoke bombs, grip your healer out of line of sight for crowd control, or things like Ring of Frost, gripping teammates out of harm's way, buying them distance from melee. 
but the most powerful way to use Leap of Faith is when facing mages. As fire is so common right now, you can grip polymorph casts onto your healer into Meteor, breaking them instantly. The same goes with any AoE though. So Orb, Infernal, you name it, you can do it. Master Spell is honestly one of the reasons I mained Priest. It's just such a fun and great utility spell. Having the power to outplay your opponents and dispel important crowd control onto your healer can really make or break games. Landing good Master Spells on enemy setups can completely negate them. Always be on the lookout for situations where you can get your healer out of crowd control. Even if you do get interrupted though, you can still then freely cast on your Shadow Skull and get interrupts out the way for your healer. Furthermore, you can also use Master Spell to remove Ice Block, Divine Shield and even Cyclone. And our last playstyle and a very important part of Shadow Priest is positioning. With Shadow being one of the most immobile classes in the game, it requires you to be very good with your positioning, as repositioning during games can almost be impossible sometimes. There are two types of positioning. Defensively, which is primarily the stance you'll want to take versus casters. So positioning yourself near a pillar so you can then easily line of sight casts. This is often required versus classes like Destruction or Fire Mages with Greater Pyroblast. The other form of positioning is when playing with another caster, and that's positioning in a way that you can accommodate for both your healer and your caster partner. This involves you being in a good spot max range and away from the enemy healer, avoiding pillars at all costs. This can enable your caster partner to then freely cast. Alright then guys, that brings this Shadow Priest 8.3 update to an end. Hope this was useful and as always be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed this video. And if you do have any more questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.